Kid, seriously. We're going to do something a little different with our topic of the week this time because it is the end of the year. So we're going to do a year end thing. This was actually Mark's idea. And then he went and got dysentery on the Oregon Trail and couldn't join us. So we are going to have to just uh, fill his in. But we are going to run through our top three movies of the year. Our top three favorite movies of the year. And we each haven't talked about this together, though Mark sent me his once we knew he wasn't going to be there. So we are going to go through, we're going to do all our number threes, all our number twos, and all our number ones. And we are going to go through the movies that we love. Since Mark isn't here, we're going to start with his... And I just need to look up what he actually wrote. So coming in at number three for Mark is a movie I haven't seen, which is the Spike Lee film Black Klansman, which is about... Uh, Maya, have you seen Black Klansman? I also have not seen it. Okay, so it's a, a Spike... Uh, trailer on it, we trailer show back we, in the day. We did, that was probably the last one we did, maybe, even, to be honest. Yeah, so it, it's a, a Spike Lee movie. Uh, it, it's, st- I know Adam Driver's in it. I apologize. I don't know the name of the other actor who's the main lead, but basically they're a team of cops who impersonate a, a KKK member to infiltrate the KKK. And it's based on a true story. It's gotten good reviews. I think it is available on prime or one of those right now, but it is available to rent. So unfortunately we can't really elaborate too much on that one. So it's Mark isn't here, but, uh, black Klansman number three for Mark. Maya, why don't you give us what your number three movie of the year was? My number three movie is actually Into the Spider Verse. Okay, so, we're gonna we're gonna hold off on that one because we're gonna come back to it later. We're gonna talk about these movies whenever they're the highest possible ranked. So we'll we'll move on to that, which brings us to my number three, which is Annihilation. Are you familiar with Annihilation? I'm not, but I heard it was great. Tell us about it. So Annihilation is Alex Garland, who did Ex Machina, and he wrote 28 Days Later, wrote the novel for The Beach. His second directorial movie, I believe, it stars Natalie Portman, Oscar Isaac, uh, Jennifer Jason Lee, Tessa Thompson, uh, Gina Rodriguez. It, it is a movie about a, a weird kind of a, a weird happening in a rural part of the East coast and some scientists who kind of have to enter this and have their realities changed as they enter it and figure out what's going on. It is not as good as ex machina because that is the best, one of the other best movies of the year it came out, but this is a visual masterpiece. It's highly entertaining. There's some great action in it. There's great performances. You haven't seen a movie like this before, it it's it's really fun and i encourage everyone to to watch it it's also kind of horror-y. there's horror elements to it for sure which is obviously something that reoccurs with me very very often on this show so go see annihilation it's alex garland he won't ever let you down if you just see alex garland attached just just see it and you'll have a good time so now this is going to move us to our number 2s and we're back to mark and mark's number 2 movie of the year and uh, shout it out if you have this one ranked higher. It is Black Panther. I have this one rated higher. All right, so we will skip that and we will move to my number two, which could be controversial. Uh, my number two is Avengers: Infinity War, and I, I, I love this movie. I think we all love this movie, and I kind of struggled because I'm going to have a different number one than either of you guys won't have on your list. So I, I didn't put Spider-Verse in mine. I didn't put Black Panther in mine. But I did... Uh, I, I picked this one, and it's because we use the word favorite. Um, I, I, don't, I don't think it's the best of those kind of comic booky movies, but it's the one I watch the most. It's the one I go back to the most. The fact that they could pull together all these storylines, all these characters after 20 years, and make it feel insanely satisfying in the way it was is really something cool. And you know what? Even if the rest of the movie sucked, I could just watch Thor landing in Wakanda for two hours and still be perfectly happy. It's a great choice in a movie that I really enjoyed. Uh, I think for for all the reasons that you talked about and because it's really bringing to a close so much of what we've cared about for so long, but it doesn't make my list. I, yeah, I wondered if it would make anyone's list. I kind of figured it would either be at the top of people's or not at all. So what is your number two, then? My number two is not a movie that came out this year, but when we were discussing how we would do this, 
it was very uh, specific that it was movies that we saw this year. And so even though this movie came out a while back, my second favorite movie of the year is John Wick. John Wick is the best action movie I have ever seen in my entire life. It took a lot of what I expected from those sorts of movies, and it turns it on its head in just the slightest way. It had a ton of style, great action, an awesome story. It had Keanu living his best life, and I enjoyed it more, almost more than any movie I've ever seen. Like The way that I judged this question was, when it was done, how jazzed was I? How excited was I when I left the experience? This one was, was me renting it, and I was so thrilled and enthralled i loved john wick one of my top maybe top five movies of all time and just super awesome so i'm so glad that uh my dad convinced me to watch it nice i actually i actually have that queued up and and ready to go based on your recommendation and then there's a, a sequel you can already get and they're filming the third one so yep my dad's watched it 12 times 12 times wow that's impressive all right, so that's going to bring us to our number one movies of the year. We'll start with Mark, and Mark had your number three, Into the Spider-Verse, listed as number one. Yeah, I obviously really, really enjoyed this movie more than Avengers Infinity War, more than Solo, A Star Wars Story, uh, which kind of breaks with the theme of the show and the, the long-running gag, but, but Into the Spider-Verse was just, again... How excited was I when I left? And I was ex super excited. I, not just because of the wonderful end credit scene, but because the whole movie was something so different in the superhero genre, so different than I was expecting. I was worried about this movie for a very long time. I was worried about how they were going to uh, intertwine Peter Parker with Miles, and and then they started talking about Gwen, and I was like, oh my god, they're just it's going to be crazy, and it was crazy. But it was crazy awesome. I love this movie. Yeah, and and the part the only part you left out is how fantastic the animation is. I've never seen animation like that before. It's it's great. It's it's a joy to watch. Uh, again, I'm, the only reason it I picked Infinity War instead of that is because I just rewatch Infinity War more. It doesn't make it a better movie. It's just the one I I go to more. And as has been pointed out before, Spider Man's just not my guy. So <laughs> it's just not for me. But it is a fantastic movie. It's by far the best Spider Man movie I've ever seen. So that brings us to your number one, and I think we know what it is. But take it away. My number one's Black Panther. Um, it is a, an awesome character. It's a movie that I was looking forward to for a long time. I can't quite really describe how excited I was to see him, Spider-Man, and Captain America all in the same movie in Civil War. So I was anticipating this movie in a huge way, and it overdid my expectations. Uh, it outdid, I should say, my expectations. There were there were little nods in that that... Uh, it was just one of the perfect movies of all time. People, people knock it for not being, you know, following the Marvel... Uh, formula, but the Marvel formula is the Marvel formula because it works. So um, I'm, I'm okay with the Marvel formula. It has great, great adaptation from the comics that I loved. Great story, great villain, great casting, mostly good CGI. And I just, I loved everything about it. And, and it was just awesome. You know, it was just, it did, it did what I hoped it would do to a character that I really love. Yeah, no, it's it's a great movie, and it's Marvel finally embracing diversity in a way that's taken them way too long to do. I mean, you you got beat to the punch by DC, and DC is basically a, a a book on how to do everything wrong when creating a cinematic universe. So good for them for finally getting to it. And it's the it's it's not just that they they took a diverse character and made something of it. It's that they made a really good movie about a diverse character. And part of the reason I think it's a, a good movie about a diverse character, you, similar to Wonder Woman, is you let you, you, you let an African-American man tell a story about an African-American man. You know, the DC let a woman tell a story about a woman. They didn't just have a white, a white male committee think what they would want uh, a diverse audience would want to see so let, let's see more of that and it's 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 a good movie so very justified number one which moves to my number one which is a horror movie called hereditary starring uh, tony collette it is an amazing movie i'm going to take a stab in the dark and say that you haven't seen it never 
It's fantastic. It is slow burn, atmospheric horror, twists and turns you don't see coming. The build up is 100% worth it because when things finally go wrong at the end, they go really, really wrong. And as I mentioned in our movie reviews, it's a horror movie that is not just about, about scaring you. It's a movie about mental illness and how that passes on and how we cope with that and how we deal with that and how it can affect generations upon generations. So it is one of the best horror movies of the last few years. It is my favorite movie of the year and it is on Amazon Prime as well. So go watch Hereditary. Black Panther is on Netflix right now and Into the Spider-Verse is uh, in theaters currently. So go see those three because they are the Kid Seriously top three movies of the year. Maya, do you want to take us out? You can find me at Maya Madrid. I, I checked my, my Twitter recently. Nice! Yeah, so uh, there's that. So you can still contact me there. Where can they contact you? You can contact me at Luke underscore Neitzel. And I don't, I tweet slightly more than you. I don't tweet a lot, but you can find out about some other projects I'm working on on there. Mark will hopefully be back alive with us next week. And you can find him at Wink Martindale 5. You can find all three of us together at Kids Seriously. And we will see you next time.